Welcome. Thanks for joining this video. In a previous video, we looked at Basker Hound's problem, which had us try to figure out a number between 1 and 2,000, and we had to use yes or no questions, had to ask all the questions, and Basker Hound is going to lie once out of 15 of the questions. So in this video, we'll solve that problem, and we're going to solve it with the Hamming code, and we've done a build-up to the Hamming code, and we left off at Lou's star code in the last video. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, please go back and check them out, and then come back to this one. So Lou's star code, as kind of pictured below here, has another way of being represented. One thing that was very nice about the star code versus the grid code is in the star you had more intersections than the grid, so you got a bit of extra efficiency out of it. So another way to think about trying to make more efficiency by getting more intersection points is instead of thinking what kind of geometric shape could I come up with that has lots of lines, what we could think about is all of the ways of arranging different groups, and we call this subsets. So thinking of all the subsets, as opposed to making up a picture, might reveal what's going on behind the scenes with this error correction method. So what we're going to do is just take this star and translate it to the language from above of all the subsets, or vice versa. You can think of going from here to the star or vice versa. So for example, M10, so the 10th message digit is going to be attached to this column that has A and B. So that's going to represent in our diagram the intersection of A and B. So that one will be M10. So going forward, the next column has AC. So M9, the ninth message digit, will be represented by the intersection of A and C. So M9 gets written right there, and so on and so on and so on to fill in all the message digits. So all the intersections of the star are attached to a message bit, and they're described in their corresponding subset up here. Now we could also do the same thing with the check digits. So the check digits in Lou's star code came from extending each line, so that we would have a check digit at the end of each of those lines that made sure there's an even number of ones along each line. So C1 in the diagram above corresponds to A, so we'd have a check digit for A written right there in the star picture. And then for B, we'd have C2, and so on. Okay, so here's the big reveal about the Hamming code. If you look at the picture above, we notice that we use subsets of size 2 and subsets of size 1 over here, but there's also other subset sizes that you could use. You could use subsets of size 3 or 4 or 5. That's what the Hamming code does. It uses the set of all subsets. So it makes all possible combinations, and in that it gets as much efficiency as you can possibly get out of your code. So let's see how this works. We're going to start off with the 7-bit Hamming code, meaning you're sending 7 ones and zeros along in your uh, code word. And we're going to first discuss playing the role of the sender. So what the sender does is looks at each of the columns in the diagram and makes sure that each of the columns has a grand total of an even amount of ones underneath each letter. So if we look at the column for A, we would count one, nothing there, two for that one, and nothing there. So a grand total for the A's would be two. And two is an even number, so we'll give that the check mark. That's how the sender sets it up. That's how the sender knows what to put under the A. This part over here is the message, 
and the digits on the right hand side, these ones in bold right here, are the check digits. So we want to send that message along and we're forced to add three digits to make sure that that message gets through correctly. So continuing on in this process, counting underneath the B, we count one, nothing there, two. So underneath the B, we have a total of two ones, and that's good, that's ready to be sent in terms of the Bs. And then for the Cs, we can check the same thing. There are no ones under the Cs, so we just put a zero there, and zero is indeed an even number, so this one is ready to be sent. Let's take a look at the next example. So underneath the A's, we would count one, two, so we put a zero underneath the A as the sender. Underneath the B's, we would count one, two, we would put a zero underneath the B. And for the C, we would count one, one in total. So this time the sender has to put an extra one underneath the C's to make sure that there's an even total. So that one is ready to be sent now. Let's check the next one out. So underneath the A's, we would count nothing, 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 nothing. So underneath the final A, the check digit for A, we need to put a zero to make sure the total is an even amount underneath the A's. Underneath the B's, we would count one. The total underneath the B's is one, so that's no good. We need to adjust that so it's an even amount, we put a one underneath that final check digit for the B. And then for the C, we notice that there's one one under the C, we put another one to make sure underneath all of the C's is an even total. So I'd like you to try on your own this last example, and I'll give you the answer after you pause the video. Okay, so there's your answer. We've also counted to make sure that these are all even numbers up here. So this message is ready to be sent with the code word having these final check digits at the, at the end. So now we're going to play the role of the receiver. We're going to take all of these messages and put into their Hamming code words and send them to ourselves, I guess. On the next page so all of these are going to get sent and there might be some error errors that we have to deal with so let's check that out so on the next page we now have to do error correction so how do we do the correction with the hamming code so what we're going to do is count underneath each letter so we'll start by counting underneath the a's so one, two, three. So that total there is three. But that's a problem. So three is no good because that number that we just wrote down is supposed to be an even number. Underneath the B's, we would count one, two. Underneath the B's, we have a two. So that's good. The two is even and no problem underneath the B's. Underneath the C's, let's count. So nothing there, nothing there, one, nothing there. So one in total, there's a problem underneath the C's. So A and C have the problem, so you look to the column that has A and C, and that's the one that needs to be fixed. This one needs to change over to that zero. Let's try some on our own without it filled in for us. Okay, so in the next example, let's go through and count. So underneath the A's, we have nothing, nothing, one, and two. So the A's are good. Underneath the B's, we count. We have one, two. The B's look to be in good shape. So we'll give that a two and a check mark. And underneath the C's, nothing, 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 and then a one. So the C has a problem. One is an odd number. So the problematic column is not A, is not B, but is C. So we look to the column that just contains C. So this digit here is the one in, the, in error that we need to fix. 
So there's our corrected code word, successfully error corrected. Okay, one more example of length seven. So in this example, we've got underneath the A's, one. So one is no good. We have a problem there. Underneath the B's, let's count. One, two, three. So three is a problematic number. Three is an odd number. Underneath the C's, we go ahead and count there too. One, two, and three. Underneath the C's is also a problem. So now we look to the column that contains A, because there's a problem there, B, there's a problem there, and C, there's a problem there. So column contains A, B, and C. So we look to the column, the leftmost one here. This one here needs to change to a zero to do the error correction. Okay, so there's one final one for you to try. So give this a try if you have A, B, C, and D. This will give you a code word of length 15. Go ahead and pause the video now. See if you can find the error in this code word. Okay, so after checking each column, you should have got that column CD has the error, and that zero needs to change to a one. Okay, so now we're all set up to rank our Hamming code and think about how to solve the puzzle mad kidnapper problem. So in terms of efficiency, we've finally got the desired efficiency that we need. We get to ask 11 questions and only have to carry along a 15 um, code word length in total. So in terms of likability, I was a little confused the first time I read about the Hamming code. I didn't really see how you could use the set of all subsets to help you out. So I'm just going to give it the regular smiley face. But in terms of math quality, it's as good as you can possibly get. It's as efficient as you can possibly get. So I'll give it all five stars there. Okay, so now let's use this to solve our problem. So we're going to try to ask the questions that correspond to the Hamming code to solve part four, the original problem of the puzzle mad kidnapper. So we have all of these questions, 1 to 11 to begin with. All of these questions are going to say, what is your number in binary? We've asked those questions before in a previous video. We've called that example 3, so let's write that down. Okay, so that leads us into question 12. So for question 12, what we're going to do is use the Hamming code to say, well, what would this digit right here be? Well, what we want to do is ask, in all the positions that are labeled A, in those columns, do they add up to an odd number of ones? So in binary, in positions 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the ones that correspond to A's, are there an odd number of ones? Because if there are an odd number of ones, then we would put a one here corresponding to yes to make the grand total even. So let's do the same thing for check digits that correspond to B, C, and D to get questions 13, 14, and 15. So we have all the positions that correspond to B, all the positions that correspond to C, and then finally all the positions that correspond to D in the final question. So that completes all 15 questions. How about we play an example out where we've asked these questions to Basker Hound and Basker Hound responds with yes or no's. How can we possibly determine where the lie is? So let's just make up an example. The first question says, in binary, is the rightmost digit a 1? So the rightmost digit would be this one over here. And if Basker Hound says, let's just say yes to that question, we would write a 1. And then we ask about the second digit, is that a 1? 
Maybe Basker Hound says no. We put a zero corresponding to that. The third digit, is that a one? Basker Hound says yes, and so on. We get a bunch of ones and zeros that Basker Hound says yes or no to. And then we say in the positions that we just labeled, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, are there an odd number of ones? And we ask those number those questions that correspond to the check digits. So let's just say Basker Hound says yes about question 12, and then no, no, and then yes to the final question number 15. Now, what would we do to figure out what Basker Hound's number actually is that it's thinking about between one and 2000? So we would check underneath the A's. We would say, okay, one, two, three, four. There's four underneath the A's. So this tells us that Basker Hound did not lie about any of the questions that correspond to an A, because there's an even amount there. We cooked it up so that if he lied, he was only allowed to lie once, there would be an odd amount there. So for part B, if we look underneath all of the letter Bs, we count the number of ones, we count one there. I just count one in total underneath the Bs. So that's a one. So Basker Hound must have lied about one of the B questions. Can you fill in the Cs and the Ds? So it turns out for this example, Basker Hound did not lie about the Cs and did not lie about the Ds and only lied about a question that had Bs and no other type of question. So the digit that must be in error is this one right here. That's where Basker Hound lied. Basker Hound said no, but really it should be a yes right there. So can you find out what Basker Hound's number actually is that he must have been thinking about in this scenario? I'll let you think about that before I reveal the answer in five seconds. So if you convert this binary number back to decimal, you get 157. That's the number that Basker Hound was thinking about. So thanks so much for listening. We'll see you on the next one.